Welcome back everyone. So as most of you know, over the past four years I've been building this aluminum body boat tailed speedster pretty much completely from scratch, from the ground up. Um, and for the first time ever right now it has a running engine installed in it with a complete drivetrain behind that. And so today we're going to be taking this thing out on its maiden voyage uh, just around my house a couple times. And I know a lot of you have been along for the ride here for most of, if not all, of this project. Uh, I started this at the end of high school and I just graduated college a few months ago, so that sort of puts things into perspective. Uh, but this project has been my absolute passion over the past, those past four years. Uh, anytime I was home, I'd, I'd be down here working on it in my free time and I've put in thousands of hours. I lost track a long time ago of how much time I've put into this. Um, but today is going to be that moment where we see it move under its own power for the first time and uh, it's hard to put that into words how exciting this is going to be. So I hope you enjoy this video and I'm glad that I can share this experience with all of you as well. So before we get going here I wanted to kind of show you some of my first test drive setup that I have here. So engine obviously right there. You saw a video or two ago my dad and I completely tore that apart gave it a, a dirty junkyard rebuild and it fired up on the first attempt which was just awesome and it, it sounds amazing when this thing's running with of course with no exhaust it's, it's just awesome. No radiator of course not going to need that right now I have the this hose here just coming up from the water pump straight back into the engine right there and we will fill that up with water I've got a water temperature gauge that I'll keep an eye on I'm only going to run this for maybe 10 minutes or so so there shouldn't be any overheating issues. Um, back here you can see got my uh, water temperature on the right there, oil pressure and kill switch. Nice and convenient there under the dash. One thing I do want to show you though is our throttle pedal setup. Um, so I don't actually have any hydraulic brakes hooked up on the front or the rear. All I have is this emergency brake or parking brake which goes to the rear wheels, uh, which will do more than nothing. It's better than no brakes. Uh, but we actually used the brake pedal there on the right as the throttle pedal for this test drive here. Um, this was a setup that my, my dad made here, which is just absolutely perfect. You can see the lever here comes down from the brake pedal, which normally just goes back here to the, the master cylinder. But now we've got this little turnbuckle on here for adjustment which goes to just a wire which connects to goes to a connection for this bicycle cable which comes up here to this nice little fitting here on this bracket that also holds our gas tank um, this like aircraft fitting here with a slit cut in it so you can slip that cable right onto it and that goes up to the throttle linkage here and that's another another little custom made block here that fits in the end of the bicycle cable and this this has a little ball joint on the end of this this factory throttle linkage um, lever here and so we got, got a little hole drilled into this aluminum block there to slip that in with another little hole drilled this way to put in a little cutter pin there so that it doesn't fall back out um, and a couple of springs here to make sure it returns back to to idle and it actually works perfect. We haven't run the engine with that on there, but just, you know, moving the pedal back and forth, it, it actually seems to work. So, so we kind of just got this whole setup ready and I mean, it's pretty much ready to go. It's nighttime right now, but we're going to get up early in the morning and <laughs> take this thing for a ride. Yeah, yeah. Could be a lot of it. 
Yes, if you let it go in there, it might come all the way up and come out, right? Yeah, we'll see. Should. So once we got it towed up into the yard here, we spent a little bit of time fiddling with the engine to try to get it running nice and smoothly. And you'll hear for yourself in a minute here just how good this Jaguar XK6 sounds once it's idling. And the other thing that I haven't mentioned, which is kind of funny too, is that I've never driven a manual car before. This is gonna be the first time in my life that I actually push in the clutch pedal on a vehicle.
slowly and off the driveway. I thought he was going to go on the driveway a little bit. So you saw at the end there, we sort of let the steam out. That was just because we forgot to put a hose clamp on one of the water lines. So that was all I was able to drive it today because of that, but really didn't matter. This was such an incredible experience uh, to actually be able to feel this thing move under its own power. Uh, I started this project, like I said, over four years ago, all because I was at the Indianapolis Speedway Museum one day and just loved the, the old speedsters there so much that I decided to, to make this, this creation for myself. And it's been, a, it's been an incredible journey and one that's still far from over. There's still a lot more work left to do that I don't really know what, when I'm gonna be able to get to, to work on it because I'm not gonna be home um, much at all. I'm living on the other side of the country now. But the good thing was that the few weeks I did have at home here, I was able to get a lot of work done with the help of my dad here and actually had some time left over. So there will be a couple more videos that come out pretty soon um, working on some other parts of the car. And those of you who have been following along with this build know that I've pretty much been a one-man show here for, for the entire project. All the design, all the fabrication, all the filming and editing of the videos is pretty much just been myself doing all of that. But I do have to give a big shout out to my dad at the end here for really helping out with the engine rebuild and getting the engine completely torn apart and put back together in just the mat a matter of days. And that was one of the things where I had a few videos out on it and all is well and good in the edited videos of that. But behind the scenes, there was a lot of frustration and a lot of time spent looking at the disassembled engine thinking that there's no way this is all going to go back together and i really don't think i would have gotten that engine rebuilt and running if it weren't for my help the help from my dad and his optimism through that whole process and definitely have to recognize my mom too for her support throughout all this she actually volunteered to drive my truck from pennsylvania to california where i'm moving just so that i would have more time during these few precious weeks at home to get the speedster driving and get as much work done on, on other parts of the car as I could. So I'm very fortunate to have grown up with the, the tools and, and shop space available to make a project like this happen and, and people around me who were supportive throughout all of it and even more so to have been able to share it with all of you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.